And I'm actually going to turn this back on and heat it back up just on low because I want it to be good and hot. It was cooled down enough that I could touch it there um, because I am going to not be able to use all of that while it's fresh. So I'm going to can a bunch of it so that I will be able to enjoy it all winter long. So that's on low. Get that out of the way. I have to kind of reorganize my kitchen here as I go. So I am going to get ready to can. This is the canner that I grew up mostly using. Um, this is called a steam bath canner. It's very similar to, and you basically use it exactly like a water bath canner, except it does not um, fully immerse the jars in water. It immerses them in steam, which is actually hotter than water. Um, but you don't need as much water. So the water goes in the bottom there. Let's see it down so you can see. Um, there's this, this rack that lifts up, but that holds the jars actually out of the water. I'm going to put it on the stove here. So this is the bottom part. The top part is what I just had my extra juice in here a second ago. So I'm just going to rinse that out. Okay, very free top to the canner again. Next thing I'm going to need, I'm just going to give this a stir. It's on low, but I definitely don't want to forget about it and burn it or something. Look at that lovely, rich purple juice. I need jars. Extra empty glass jars I usually keep on that um, covered up above the couch there when I am not filling them up. This is the time of year when everything starts getting really full. Now I'm not sure exactly how many quarts I'm going to have there. The canner can take seven at a time, so I'm going to get seven jars ready. Even though I am not entirely sure that that's going to be a full seven quarts. In fact, my guess is that it's not. Now you want your jars clean and hot. So this is true for any time you're canning anything. This is not specific to berry juice. Um, gotta move my operation around here a little to have space. I'm just going to get a fresh sink of berry free water. And I know that these jars were very clean when I put them away, so I'm just giving them a rinse in the hottest water that I can get out of my tap. I'm not really washing them with soap because um, they've been stored upside down since they were clean. I know there's no um, cruddies in them, but I do want them to be very bacteria free. So I'm going to heat them up incredibly hot here in just a second. If you live in a more traditional house and you have a dishwasher you can simply put them all in there and run a um, like rinse and dry cycle because that heats them up as well and that, that would do a very similar accomplish about the same objective as to what I am doing here this I'm going to take that heat up a little bit because I want this to actually come back to a bubbling boil and uh, I need lids. Sometimes I reuse um, these lids only for when I'm like recovering something that's in the fridge or whatever. Some people are comfortable reusing them for actually canning but once they've been sealed I don't like to use them again for actually canning anything. So I am going to get some brand new ones, which I also keep up there. Brand new wide mouth counting, canning lids. I like the wide mouth jars versus the narrow mouth just because it wouldn't really matter with juice, but I try to, when I do get jars, only get wide mouth because they're great if you have to put something more chunky than juice in them. 
they're just easier to get things in and out of the top. So I have all wide mouths. Though if you have some narrow mouths, um, using them for juice would be a great way to use them up. So I've got seven lids. I'm gonna actually soak them in my hot water over here. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary, but it keeps them really hot and kind of softens that rubber a while that we need to seal. Because what happens, if you've never canned, is this is a metal lid, but this ring right around here is rubber. And when you screw it onto the top of your jar, and then we're gonna basically pressurize, well, create a pressure difference with the steam in there, um, the ring just holds it in place while this happens then the suction is going to suck that down really tight and squish the rubber in there right onto this rim and then it will be sealed and no little cruddies can get in there. Let's see if this is about to boil. I can hear it starting to simmer. Very close. Scoop back here. And then this is a nice little stainless steel funnel that fits the wide or narrow mouth jars, which is awesome. Um, easy to make less of a mess when you are doing this. Got a boil there. And I'm actually going to. Oh, sure. My jars are over here. Let's go this way. I'm going to take with a hot pad. Take that off the heat and move my canner over onto the burner because that water I put down there in the base, I want to have that at a boil here in a second. So I'm going to come over here and just ladle this hot juice into my clean hot jars, filling them up to... Fill them up to kind of the neck of the jar. Show you what that looks like here in one second. The jar's gonna be hot now. But I'm filling it up like right to here. You don't want to go to the top, you need some air space. But I am going most of the way up. So we're just gonna see how many quarts we actually get. Like I said, I was pretty sure it's not going to be seven, but I wanted to have that many ready just in case because I can't ever have too much of a good berry juice like this. <clears throat> cherries in general especially tart cherries and um, such are also really good if, or if you have joint pain or arthritis or gout. Um, a lot of people buy tart cherry juice to take if they have those symptoms and it's expensive so if I can go pick and make my own for free, and it's yummy, then I may as well take the time to do so. Here we go. Three full quarts. I have at least four. And you could do this in pints as well. I've just used up most of my pint jars already. I have far more quart jars than pint jars. And um, uh, so I have mostly quarts left, so that's what I'm doing. And I can drink a quart of juice in a pretty big hurry, even if I don't have a friend over or anybody I want to share it with because I like fruit and I like good juices made out of them. You could eat these choke cherries raw. I have eaten a handful that way. I can't say I've ever encountered anybody who really loves them raw because they are pretty, still a little warm, um, pretty bitter. Down to the end and see if we're going to get another full quart. No, we are not. And I only want to can full jars, so I'm going to just keep this guy out to use up in the next day or two. So that is fine. Now I gotta put lids on here. Got my lids that I was had in my warm water here. I also get my fingers wet with clean water 
and just run them all over the rim like that to be sure there's nothing sticking to the glass there. It's not a big deal with juice, but if you were canning anything um, chunkier and you got a piece of something there, it would hold this lid up a little bit, even if it was much less up than that, and you wouldn't get a good seal. So I want to be sure there's nothing between the rubber and the glass. And these jars are hot because I put boiling juice in them. And I want to just turn these rings onto them as firmly as I can because that's, like I said, all that's doing is holding that rubber seal very snugly onto the jar until I get them into the canner. The, one of the biggest dangers with a steam bath canner, much like lifting a lid off of any kind of pot when you're cooking, when it's hot in there, don't open it towards yourself. You can give yourself a serious steam burn and with a steam canner, just that much more because you've got a, a very big pot depth full of steam. So I'm gonna tip it up away from me even though there's not a lot of steam in it. Well, there's some, but not tons yet. So that water is getting hot. I put my hot jars here. I want to keep my canner kind of balanced so I don't want to arrange them all on one side or the other. Just kind of evenly in the middle there and plop this back on. And that stove is on high. Now there's a little tiny hole that you might not be able to see here and one on the other side. I'm going to let that go until I see steam shooting out the holes. Now for that to happen, steam will have to, because it rises, because it's hot, it'll fill up the top first and as it gets more and more steam, it'll get the whole way down to that water level before it can come out that hole. So when they're coming out the holes, then I know the entire canner is full of steam and then I will time it. And for juice, I'm just gonna can them for about 15 minutes um, for quarts and um, so I'll check back in once there's steam coming out. That's probably gonna take eight or nine minutes at least to, to fill the whole way up with steam and get down there for me to start timing it. In the meantime, I'm going to clean up some of my berry mess over here. I didn't even get most of my cleanup done. You can probably see, I don't know how well the camera picks up, little puffs of steam starting to come out here. So I am going to set my handy dandy wind up timer here for 15 minutes. And when that is done, I'm going to turn it off and I'll show you what we do then. Oh yeah, and since I've got juice here, that didn't go in my canner, I'm going to enjoy a glass of right now. Now this is pretty concentrated. Um, super thick, pretty purple, uh, bright pinky color. And my absolute favorite way to drink really tart juices is with this ginger brew. It's really foamy. Just a little bit sweet. It's got, uh, uh oh. I know better than to do that. I've done that before. Did I mention it foams up a lot? Pour that slower and more carefully. Um, the ginger brew is sweetened with a little bit of pineapple juice, so it um, is just a little sweet, and then with a little bit of um, uh, tart to the cherry juice, this is just awesome. I absolutely love drinking this. I wish I could share that beautiful flavor with you through the camera. Okay, now our time is up. You can see there's still steam coming out. I'm going to turn this off. And again, remember what I said about when I open this, um, there's a lot of steam trapped in there. So I don't want to tip that toward me, just like lifting a lid on, a, on any other pot. If you've ever done that, you will definitely get a steam burn, which can be fairly severe. Um, this steam bath canner, um, I'm not sure why they're not more popular, actually. A lot of people don't seem to like them as well as water bath canners though I've been using them. See all the steam pouring out of there? I have been using them since I was a tiny little girl to um, preserve food and have eaten one of them already sealed. Did you hear that pop? I love that sound. If you've ever canned, you know what I mean. I mean, that's just the sound of like all your work being done and finished and completed for the year and safe and sound preserved. 
I'm uh, setting them on a cloth here. My wood countertops would be pretty um, fine as well, but you don't want to take a hot jar out of the counter and set it on a cold surface. You can crack the glass because of the, the temperature difference. But a lot of people seem to prefer water bath canners and and I just like the steam bath. It's a little simpler because you don't have so much boiling hot water. And I've eaten probably tens of thousands of canned goods over 30 something years that were processed in steam bath canners and never had the slightest problem with a um, did grow up in a family of nine and we canned like a hundred or two hundred quarts of every single thing. Oh yeah, we did 120 quarts of cherries. Oh yeah, and six bushels of peaches, which made whatever, a hundred something quarts. Oh yeah, and that much applesauce and green beans and maybe corn and pie filling and, you know, you get the idea. I've canned a lot of stuff. So anyway, um, those are just going to cool down. I'm now that I've moved them out of the canner, I'm not going to move them for about 24 hours because I want that seal. And when you heard that pop, what's happening is it's not um, very easy to see, but that lid has a little curve up like that in the middle. And when the pressure sucks down because of the the temperature difference that actually like sinks down in. I don't want to touch it because it's scalding hot, but if I would push on the top of the lid now, it wouldn't go down anymore. Before, if I would have pushed on the top, I would have felt some spring to it like that. So I know that one's sealed. I'll have three more pops to here. I don't even worry about it if, if they don't pop for at least a full day later. So that's why I don't want to disturb them or move them at all. And then after that, I, I'll put them in my pantry and all that. So that's just a look at how I can um, choke cherry juice. Nothing very complicated about it. The same basic procedure works for canning anything. The one other berry juice I did this year and did not have time to do a video of was, I don't know, it's so dark the, the camera doesn't probably show it up very well, but this is service berry juice. They're also called June berries or sus so squan berries, I'm not sure how people pronounce that. They're, they go by different names in different areas, but they grow across a lot of the country. Dark purpley blue berry that looks a lot like a blueberry. Um, but what I did for these, because they didn't have any big cherry pit in them like this, this was even easier. I just filled the jar up to there with the berries. Just, you know, picked them, washed them, filled it up to there with berries, poured boiling hot water, did the exact same thing to seal them in there. And then that hot water um, kind of leaches all the flavor out of the berries. And so when I open it, that should be good berry juice. So that just to give you another idea of another way to do berries. Um, growing up, we'd do grape juice a lot like that. Just put grapes in the jar, pour, pour hot water over it, can it, and the flavor would soak out into the water and give you grape juice. So anyway, that's um, a look at how I'm doing some of my preserving to have yummy foods for the winter and hopefully that encourages you to maybe learn about and check out any wild foods like berries or cherries that may grow in your area and um, put some up so you have them to eat later. Thanks for watching folks! If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here and if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.